हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दी सम ऑफ द एफ एम जी क्वेश्चन विच आर सो कॉल्ड आस्ट इन दी जून टू जीरो टू टू एग्जाम एंड वी आर जस्ट ट्राइंग टू रिकॉल दोज क्वेश्चन विच आई कुड कलेक्ट फ्रॉम दी वेरियस स्टूडेंट्स एंड जस्ट टू हैव एन आइडिया वट ऑल दोज टॉपिक्स दे वर आस्ट दिस टाइम सो मूविंग ऑन टू दी फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ टू ईयर चाइल्ड इज ब्रॉड टू दी पी एस सी ओ पी डी विद फीवर एंड कफ सिंस लास्ट टू डेज ऑन एग्जामिनेशन द चेस्ट इन ड्रॉइंग इज प्रेजेंट रेस्पिरेटरी रेट इज थर्टी एट पर मिनट मैनेजमेंट विल बी वॉट विल बी देयर और दिस इज द क्वेश्चन हेयर पर्टिकुलरली द चाइल्ड एज इज गिवन टू ईयर्स दैट इज देयर एंड वी गो फॉर दी आई एम एन सी आई क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द निमोनिया दैट इज इंटीग्रेटेड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ नियोनेटल एंड चाइल्ड हुड इलनेस दिस इंटीग्रेटेड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ नियोनेटल एंड चाइल्ड हुड इलनेस क्लासिफिकेशन इज फॉर टू टू फिफ्टी नाइन मंथस ऑफ एज सो दिस क्लासिफिकेशन इज फॉर टू टू फिफ्टी नाइन मंथस ऑफ एज एंड आवर चाइल्ड एज इज टू ईयर्स तो डेफिनेटली दिस क्लासिफिकेशन विल अप्लाई टू दिस एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस if there is presence of fast breathing and or or chest in drawing and or or chest in drawing it is classified as pneumonia it is classified as pneumonia so you are saying is there is fast breathing and or or so the word important to remember is it is not and it is also or so even if chest in drawing is alone present you will still call it as what pneumonia and here it is being given chest in drawing present so this will be called as pneumonia and the treatment will be oral amoxicillin for 5 days it will be oral amoxicillin for 5 days and it will be follow up after 2 days follow up after 2 days so here basically you get is the pneumonia that is there that is the clinical treatment to be done and the treatment will be oral amoxicillin as such here nothing else is being given that the child is having wheeze also if the child is having wheeze also you need to add bronchodilator therapy for 5 days so direct question i hope everybody of must you must have scored this 100% right what is the most common seizure find in the age group of 2 years again a direct question and the answer here is what febrile seizure and if you see the febrile seizure age group the febrile seizure age group is 6 months to 60 months so febrile seizure age group is 6 months to 60 months and this is particularly associated with rate of change of temperature so if the temperature suddenly increases or the temperature suddenly decreases both have got the increased risk of febrile seizure it is not associated with cns infection in this age group it can be meningitis encephalitis which can cause fever with seizure but this is not associated with what cns infection there is no previous history of a febrile seizure it should not be like this that the child is having previously the a febrile seizure now seizure with fever there is no previous history of a febrile seizure and there is no metabolic abnormality there is no metabolic abnormality so if this criteria is totally fulfilled the age group which is there 6 months to the 60 months associated with rate of change of temperature not associated with cns infection no previous history of a febrile seizure no metabolic abnormality that is febrile seizure which is the most common particularly seizure in this age group a baby was born limp and having apnea what you will do next right again a direct question you can think of a newborn resuscitation and you should always remember the points here if the child is having the persistent cyanosis persistent cyanosis or there is labored breathing persistent cyanosis or labored breathing you should go for cpap that is continuous positive airway pressure but if a child is having apnea or the child has got heart rate 
less than 100 per minute or the child particularly is gasping. Now all these three things they become something very serious on the serious note and then your answer should be positive pressure ventilation that is by bag and mask ventilation bag and mask ventilation right now out of this is the question i choose what the line we are using what you will do next ideally it should be which should be the most appropriate next step right because give oxygen that can be the point also but this language according to the students it was there but according to me it should have been there most appropriate because here also you do the spo2 monitoring also that is to be done here so here your most appropriate answer should be positive pressure ventilation when does handedness gets established right a child becomes right handed left handed when does and normally what we teach is that is established at 3 years of age so out of the choices being given if we look at the most appropriate that is 36 to 42 months and the important thing you should remember is if in a child there is early hand preference if in a child there is early hand preference for example a six month child is there is always using the right hand is not using the left hand now you can think this is a this is going to become right handed but the handedness gets established at three years of age so this if there is a early hand preference you should always think of spastic hemiplegic type of cerebral palsy you should always think of spastic hemiplegic type of cerebral palsy and you should always first of all do mri to rule out cerebral infarction to rule out cerebral infarction so always remember in a child if there is early hand preference that is a cause of worry right and this can be a pointer towards what spastic hemiplegic type of cerebral palsy and you should do mri and mostly the spastic hemiplegic type of cerebral palsy is secondary to the congenital causes of hypercoagulability it is the congenital causes of hypercoagulability right moving on to the next question i hope these will all be very simple questions a three-year-old child presented to OPD with mother. His mother reports normal breastfeeding till two years. Now the child shows decreased milk intake. On examination, protein malnutrition was found along with the edema. What is the diagnosis? Right. Now, if you see these were the choices being given, there is nothing pointer. What is the weight? Because let us first of all discuss here is the welcome classification. Welcome classification. And this welcome classification is based on the weight for age and edema. Weight for age and edema. If the weight for age is 60 to 80 percent and edema is absent, such a child is called as undernourished child. Undernourished child. If it is 60 to 80 percent and edema is present, such a child is called as the quasi orker child. This is quasi orker child. Less than 60% edema is absent. Such a child is called as marasmus. Less than 60% edema is present. Such a child is called as marasmic quasi orker. Marasmic quasi orker. Now, according to students, the language given was like this. Now, if you see here, they have not mentioned anything particularly regarding the weight, right? So, moreover, they have given edema. So, if I choose regarding the edema, either it can be this, either it can be this. But as such, they have not given the weight. So, I think you should always go with the quasi orker that is there. The child is having the decreased milk intake. Maybe the protein intake is decreased and that can be the right answer here. But if the weight was given in this question, then I need to specify that what else the options there were, right? Nutrient deficient in breast milk. Now something, someone is saying that it was vitamin K not given. Some are saying vitamin D. But if you particularly, this was the choice being given. So it is vitamin K 
मोर देन वाइटमिन डी वाइटमिन के मोर देन वाइटमिन डी सो देन अप्रोप्रिएट आंसर इज वाइटमिन के राइट सेकेंड इज वाइटमिन डी नाउ इट्स वेरी ट्रू दैट वाइटमिन डी इज डेफिशियंट इन द मदर्स बिकॉज इन दी मदर्स ऑल्सो दे इज डिक्रीज एक्सपोजर टू सन लाइट इफ दे इज डिक्रीज एक्सपोजर टू सन लाइट ऑल्सो मदर्स आर नाउ वट इज यूजिंग सनस्क्रीन लोशन ऑल्सो सो मदर्स इज हैविंग डेफिशियंसी ऑफ द वाइटमिन डी राइट एंड वाई वी से वाइटमिन की इफ यू रिमेंबर क्लासिकल हेमरेजिक डिसऑर्डर ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न क्लासिकल हेमरेजिक डिजीज ऑफ न्यू बॉर्न Now this is basically seen in a child who is delivered at home, who is delivered at home, and on exclusive breast feeds. Child was delivered at home, so therefore, what does the child did not receive? Child did not receive injection vitamin K at birth, and on exclusive breast feeds, and the child is mostly deficient. the breast milk is mostly deficient in which vitamin vitamin k so according to me if vitamin k was given in the choice then the answer is vitamin k and if that was not given in the choice then the answer is vitamin k right and you can very well correlate it with the classical hemorrhagic disease of the newborn a child presents with normal height but weight was lesser than expected for that height it will be classified as again direct question is there we all know weight for height weight for height is a marker of this is a marker of acute malnutrition which is also called as wasting height for age this is a marker of chronic malnutrition chronic malnutrition this is called as stunting and weight for age is a marker for both that is acute and chronic malnutrition and if you consider here body mass index is less than 18.5 bmi is less than 18.5 then when you say acute malnutrition it basically means is it is for less than 3 months less than 3 months so if we say the weight is lesser than expected for that height so that means weight for height you are talking marker and that weight for height your right answer should be wasting that is wasting here right so this all the things to be remembered and this particularly point here that acute malnutrition is less than 3 months which most of the students do not know they do know what is acute marker and what is chronic marker but this point they do not know please do remember it is for less than 3 a four year child weight falls between 85th to the 95th percentile on growth chart now this child comes under which category of course it cannot be normal child and it cannot be underweight so you rule out two now you are left with overweight and obese and even if you don't know at least i hope everybody knows obese child is having more than 95th percentile obese child is having more than 95th percentile so what we are left with is now that is overweight so the if a child is having a weight 85th to 95th this will be classified as a overweight child right always in the mcqs follow the method of exclusion at least first rule out two out then you are left with two only a child presents with lish nodules and on iris and cafe ola macules similar symptoms were seen in his father and grandmother what is the mode of transmission of this condition now even if you don't know what is this disease although this condition is neurofibromatosis 1 even if you don't know what the examiner has been given there is no skipping of generation if you see grandmother was affected then father also had the disease child is having the disease so overall if you see there is no skipping of generation and no skipping of generation is a feature of autosomal dominant condition autosomal dominant condition whenever you remember neurocutaneous syndrome remember nf1 nf2 tuberous sclerosis tuberous sclerosis and vhl they are all 
autosomal dom only the sturge weber this is due to the sporadic mutation and this is non hereditary it is sporadic mutation and it is non hereditary right so always the examiner when they ask such question they are giving two clues at least so even if you don't know lish nodule and cafe all molecules you get confused just remember the basics of genetics normally there is no skipping of generation in which condition autosomal dominant condition so the answer comes out to be here autosomal dominant a 3 year boy sorry 13 year boy presents with gastric outlet obstruction and vomiting i have always told in my notes while i tell the management of severe dehydration if there is isolated vomiting with dehydration this is isolated vomiting with dehydration you should always prefer normal saline as ringer lactate can precipitate alkalosis the simple question gastric outlet obstruction vomiting you should always prefer normal saline as ringer lactate can precipitate what alkalosis which vaccine is given at birth although you must have studied multiple we all know bcg opv birth dose hepatitis b birth dose this is something which is given at birth is so these are all the vaccines which are being given but regarding hepatitis b remember one point if it is a preterm child and this is less than also 2 kg then zero dose the zero dose at birth is not given zero dose at birth is not given i hope they have not asked this point they have should have not given any birth weight they should have asked you the direct questions right then according to some students there was question on the vitamin d also which i could not get and simply i think according to the students what they were saying me there is the calcitriol which increases the calcium absorption by acting on the vitamin d receptor vitamin d receptor right and i got there was a question on congenital heart disease also and vitamin d resistant tickets but that i could not get so guys i hope you all must have corrected all the questions here if there is any other question please do type in the messages if you want to practice more questions for the pediatrics do subscribe to this channel this is dr ashutosh agarwal all the best from your side to you always thanks